Welcome to another video about the appliances in our super high-tech forever home. So here we have a super high-tech washer and super high-tech heat pump dryer. Jared, take it away. In terms of laundry, this is probably, I would say, one of the items that most people would be really surprised to hear how much Mila has a history in it. In 1901, we started creating our first laundry. And over the course of more than 120 years, we have so many different innovations. In particular, Mila was the first appliance brand in the world to put a microprocessor inside of an appliance, went into a washing machine. Look at this washer. Oh, it's so small, right? Because we live in America. No, no, no. It actually fits a ton of stuff inside. And because this washer is so smartly engineered, I actually keep the quick guide right here so that I know all of the different amazing ways it can wash things. Because while I do know how to do the laundry, this machine knows how to do it much better than I do. You can create some really bad habits, which is to say people run one program for every article of clothing they own. They use one type of detergent and it doesn't matter what's going in the machine. It's just the way it is. Now, that's really convenient and there's something to be said for that, I'm sure. But the reality is oftentimes I hear from people, I don't get it. My clothes don't last like they used to. They don't do this, they don't do that. Well, consider for a moment, your grandmother did not have one program she ran. She didn't have one method for doing clothes. She did everything according to what type of fabric it was. So your clothing wasn't magically lasting longer back then. It's that it wasn't being abused inappropriately back then. If you really account for the type of fi uh, fiber, the type of textile you're putting into the machine, and you appropriately select a program that was actually geared towards it, you're going to have much better results. So first and foremost, you have the program, which is really important. And if we look back to the center circle, this would be the part of the, the cycle where you're really talking about the type of mechanical action, the time that you're exposing that, and of course, the temperature selection. If you open up the drum of a Mila washing machine and a Mila dryer, you're going to notice a very specific pattern. We call it a honeycomb pattern. Now, with the washing machine, it's going to be a concave pattern, which is going to ultimately allow for water to collect over that honeycomb in a way that it creates a sheen of water between the fabric and the stainless steel drum. So we can effectively agitate the clothing without ultimately exposing it to undue stresses that will really wear the fabric down. Now on the dryer, we actually reverse the pattern. Here you'll have a convex pattern, which will automatically create a pocket of air between the fabric tumbling down on it and the drum. Once again, minimizing the impact will ultimately mean the fabric can last longer. In addition to that, it also gives a little bit of traction because you can imagine it creates a bit of a cup that holds the fabric up higher. The higher it goes up the drum, the more when it's tumbling down, hot air can pass around it and thus you're extracting moisture from the fabric. One of the things I love about this washer is that it doesn't smell. You know how some washers just get that stink? This one has not, which is wonderful. And I use it a ton of the time because there's a, a lot of pre-washing going on in my house. Our washing machines beyond that also have, going back to our 20 year life expectancy, something that is completely unique in the industry in terms of extracting moisture. What happens at the end of a washing program? Well, for most of us who are cleaning, let's say an average normal cycle, we're doing just a mixed cottons load. We're going to have a very high spin speed at the end. That high spin speed is ultimately gonna extract water out of the inner drum and into the outer drum. That's going to create a lot of instability for the machine. So every machine in the industry uses a counterweight. So first there's a bearing cross behind the drum to stabilize it a little bit. And then there's a bunch of counterweights to ensure that you don't shake so much that the house is gonna violently shake, you're gonna damage the floor, or that you're gonna just start really cracking and splitting components inside the machine. Every manufacturer on earth uses a cement block as their counterweight and their bearing cross. There's no exception to that. The only exception will be that sometimes they'll be nice enough to put a 
a little plastic shell around this cement block. But you can imagine at high spin speeds, at high rates, RPMs that are exceeding 1,000, you're going to get splitting and cracking that occur with those. Once that happens, it's a very costly repair. Miele's solution is a cast iron ba bearing cross and counterweights. The cast iron is so well refined as it's being poured that we actually use those same cast iron bearing crosses on our marine units. And you can imagine salt, air, and a cast iron material do not mix well, typically. With Miele though, it doesn't oxidize and it can withstand our 20 year life expectancy even in those conditions. Ultimately, our machines are a lot heavier than most in the market today, but we also go up to higher RPM speeds, so we extract more water, and we have a lot more versatility in usage. We talk about these high RPM spin speeds, and that's really important for, of course, getting the moisture out of the fabric as much as possible in the washing machine, because the more moisture I remove during the washing process, the faster my drying process is going to be. One more quick note about the speed of a washer because I know there's a lot of funny, great scenes and movies about it, but this one is very, very strong. It's seriously fast. And because of that, we have actually put our washer on little vibrational pads so that the whole house doesn't shake. I also like the size of this because I wanted to be able to get all of these things into a decent sized closet, not a whole huge extra room just devoted to oversized laundry. This is our heat pump dryer. Heat pump technology is one of three technologies for dryers that exist in the market today. There's the traditional vented dryer, which will take air from your home. They'll then heat it up, put it through the drum. The hot air will start to grab moisture from the clothing then it takes that warm moisture laden air and it expels it out of your home through ductwork, which means we have to then account for that air that's just been exhausted by bringing in new air. We have to condition that new air and then we're going to do this process again. Not to mention the fact that vent work requires you to maintain it because you can create a fire hazard. So there's a lot of peripheral reasons why vented technology has really been outdated and that most people, if they have the option, should really opt for a different technology platform. That brings us to the other two. One is condensation drying. Now, condensation drying is drawing air in through the bottom of the unit, or what's called the plinth, and then it will take it and expose it to a hot heating element, bring it into the dryer, and of course, push that hot, dry air through the drum where it collects a lot of moisture. That warm moisture laden air is then exposed to a cold element for a moment in hopes that it can extract as much humidity as possible, but whatever it doesn't get out of the air, it exposes back into the room. The problem is that these dryers need a fresh feed of cool, dry air every process where the air circuit is cycling through. Now, as you're exhausting warm moisture laden air into the room, cool dry air becomes more of a premium. There's not as much of it. So not only do you have to recondition it through your central unit, but on top of that, you're also talking about staggering the cycle times because if it can't get more cool dry air, that means the cycle is gonna run longer to achieve dry results because ultimately it has to keep processing and cycling air that isn't appropriate for its particular type of technology. So enter in heat pump technology. Heat pump technology works on a platform very similar to what I described with refrigeration. That is to say, we take a compressor unit. We're going to have a coolant circuit and a, an air circuit, if you will. The coolant circuit works by compressing a coolant, making it very hot. Then it runs it through capillary tubes where it can superheat up before we then open the tubing and it gets really cold. Imagine that this is one large rectangle. If we move air across it, right, we have a hot side where we heat it up, we have a cold side where we cool it down. Now I'm going to bring an air circuit into play. The air circuit gets hot, goes into the drum. While it's in the drum, it moves through the clothing and of course starts to collect all the moisture. It then makes its way back to that rectangle. Now the rectangle was hot here and started making its way around to where it's cold here. 
when that warm moisture laden air hits a very cold surface, then of course the water is shed into a pan. The air continues moving forward where it hits that hot side again. And this process can keep going and going until the program is finished. The water that keeps getting extracted will go either into a drawer at the top of the unit, or if you'd like, you can simply connect a hose to where you're going to drain your washing machine out of. We're also not going to need to have multiple draws of air. So at the beginning of the cycle, you draw air once, you go through the entirety of the heat circuit, and we're not going to need to exhaust and bring in fresh air because we'll just keep manipulating the one breath we took. And it's a compressor system. The compressor is really easy. A compressor only has to push the uh, coolant through a really thin tube and then keep pushing it until it gets to the big tube. This means that we don't need to actually have the same level of power that you traditionally do. You only need 120 volts, 15 amps for a dryer that will actually dry your clothing. So real quick, with this dryer, let's bust some myths with size, time, and heat. First of all, size, it's small. Oh, I can't get things in it. This actually has a huge capacity and it was engineered to hold a lot. Time, it's gonna take forever because it's a heat pump, right? No, no, it actually dries really, really effectively, quickly, and there's even an express function on it. It is super gentle and powerful too. So you can go too hot with certain garments if you're not careful. Heat, let's talk about heat. We thought surely with a heat pump, there will still be some heat coming out and being the science channel that we are, if the heat was going to be a problem, we actually pre-plumbed an exhaust stack in the wall so that we could put a port in. But we haven't needed to because this barely, barely puts out any heat and we can even close the closet and not have a problem. But because we love testing, Corbett, let's test it. So we set up a hobo data logger in the laundry room. Uh, we closed the doors once we hit start on the dryer. Now, what you're seeing on the left hand side of this graph is first of all, the temperature is up top. The temperature uh, spikes, those little mountain ranges that you see there, that's a one degree temperature rise and fall. So the house really doesn't move that much. The HVAC system is turning on about five times a day, according to this graph. You can see each time it turns on to uh, heat up the house and then it drifts back down. So those one degree increments on the left are echoed below them in the blue with the relative humidity. Each of those spikes is a, also about a 1% up and down of relative humidity. The dotted line at the bottom is dew point. We won't worry too much about that right now. What I wanted to draw your attention to here is the spike at the event of the dryer turning on. Now that looks like a major issue, but you know, remember that these little mountain ranges are just a one degree or a 1% up and down. So that spike in temperature at the top is about a five degree temperature rise. And that happens, by the way, in 90 minutes. It goes five degrees warmer over the course of 90 minutes. The relative humidity spiked about uh, 7%, and the dew point, incidentally, spikes about six uh, degrees. So what's interesting here is that the relative humidity spiked right back down. You can see it jumps up and it jumps right back down over the course of about 30 minutes, which I thought was pretty impressive. Um, the temperature it takes about 12 hours to turn back around and come back down to what is now room temperature. And by the way, if you notice the uh, little mountain range on the very far right, which is the last day of the logging that we took here, we actually had to switch over into cooling mode because we were in a shoulder season here and sometimes it's a little cold and sometimes a little warm. If we weren't gonna use a heat pump dryer, we would use this. And why do we have this? Because we're the Building Performance Workshop. We also train on ventilation and home performance science. So this is an extra lint trapper with this. This is called the Fantech Dryer Booster, and it basically turns on to really press that hot air out of your home. Because our front door is so close to our dryer, you wouldn't just pump it right out outside by your front door. You would actually send it back 
to another side of the home that you don't mind having exhausted hot air come out of. Dryers are something that is are far more of an American phenomenon than anywhere else in the world. In fact, many European countries still to this day will have a washer with no dryer attached. They'll simply utilize a line drying system because that's what they've done traditionally. Here in America, there's a reason why the dryer is such a focal point. And that's honestly because the textiles we wore were significantly heavier historically than where other places in the world did. And a dryer, especially the old traditional vented dryers, can exhaust, they sandblast with hot air all of the fabrics. So you need a heavier cotton, you need a denim to really withstand that over the period of time. Where if you're using really delicate types of fabrics, you're going to eat through them much faster. Now, the rest of the world is probably getting more and more uh, accustomed and liking the idea of clothes that are drying in the automatic dryer because naturally it's a lot shorter, not to mention you don't have to do as much manual process in terms of steaming out or ironing things out when you put it into a dryer as opposed to line drying. But ultimately, what you start to really see is our evolution of things comes full circle. With a heat pump dryer, you still have a fine mesh uh, lint catcher and it's, it's quite fine. And it catches all the little pieces of dirt too that my children definitely bring into my house. And then there is a second lint filter here, which is lovely because I and some of the other dryers have had to reach down and deep for the lint that inevitably escapes you. This is a heat pump, so it also has a secondary filter, the plinth filter. This filter is here to catch any dust, cat hair, things like that, before it would reach the heating coil. That Mila, the drum itself that we were talking about, that honeycomb pattern, it's a whole sensor, the entirety of that drum. Clothing, when you put it into the dryer, it contains moisture from the washing process. Now, whether you're aware of this or not, your water has very specific chemical elements to it. Those elements actually can create conductivity. So anytime, let's say your fabric hits two points in the drum, it creates a very small microcurrent of electricity. By measuring how strong that current is at the beginning of the cycle, we have a baseline understanding of the chemical component of your water. Then as the cycle starts moving and the clothes are tumbling around, we keep intermittently taking measurements. As the conductivity keeps going down, 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 we know the clothing is getting drier and drier. Then once there's no more conductivity moving from point to point when the uh, fabric is making contact with the drum, we then determine that the program is over. By doing this, all you have to do is start a program. We call it perfect dry technology, but that means you don't have to set any particular time. There is an option for a time dry program, but generally speaking, all of the programs you choose are based on the type of fabric. And then of course, by having this perfect dry system, you're never going to overexpose your clothing to really hot air, but at the same time, you're going to make sure the process occurs until the fabric is actually dry. There's one other aspect of drying that's really important. When I was talking about earlier, people that have the everything program with a dryer, it's super important that you don't do that. The reason for that is if I was doing, let's say my bed sheets, if the drum keeps rotating in the same direction, the bed sheet can start twisting into itself and then it creates a knot. And in the center of that knot, I have wet fabric and on the outside I have dry. And if I choose bed linens, it's essentially going to run two spins in one direction, stop, reverse in the other. And there's all different programs that are specific in terms of the temperature threshold, how it's tumbling them around. You know, I have my bed linens, so I'm gonna choose bed linens as my program. You have jeans, put it in the denims program. Starting at the Miele washing machine and ending with a Miele dryer, through testing that we've done, we've determined that fabric inside of Miele laundry will last up to four times longer than it will in a competitor machine. That's because of course we want to achieve clean results, but we have to do it with optimum fabric care. And that is my washer and dryer. I hope you have enjoyed hearing more about the appliances in this super high-tech scientific home and enjoyed the science behind these machines. Like, subscribe, tune in next time.